I'll just introduce. So welcome everybody, welcome Chris and uh, welcome Giuseppe to the Wines of Italy Lab today with, uh, as said, Giuseppe Sala from uh, Iselvatici Winery close to Montevarchi. Um, so I'm Katarina and this is uh, as usual every Tuesday and uh, you can find more news always on my on my website grapevineadventures.com that you can see in the chat here. Uh, so we'll just start and I'll present Giuseppe Sala who will talk a bit about himself, his uh, family and his winery. <laughs> Good evening, I'm Giuseppe. Good evening everyone. And uh, just a little bit about, uh, my name is Giuseppe Sala. My family uh, produced wine here in the Chianti Colliere Pini since uh, the 1953. I'm the third generation. My grandfather started the winery. And we are a, a little boutique winery. We have uh, uh, 10 hectares, about uh, 40 acres. Uh, and we produce high quality wine. We produce two of our wines are, you know, rated by Wine Spectator magazine. And we try to put over 90 all the time. And um, we export the 100 percent the only place in italy where we sell our wine or where you can find our wine it's here at the winery uh, where i am right now this is my tasting room where every day is you know tourist uh, every day it's every day is during spring and summer and fall yes. uh, where we do wine testing and all of that uh, we produce four different kinds of wine uh, you know, in Tuscany, we are uh, uh, well known for reds, okay? But we produce a very interesting white, the only white that we produce, that it's 100% uh, Malvasia grape. And uh, I call this, this white, I call this white a super Tuscan white. It means it's a full body white. It's not a white, and it's white, like most of the... Tuscan uh, winery produce also because everyone here in Tuscany really focuses on the reds, not in the white. So mm -hmm. also because, uh, you know, uh, it's not good to have too much white. I mean, here the white, you know, by acre, uh, with the Sangiovese grape the certificate, Chianti, you know, worth much more than to have white grape any kind of white grape, so mm. that's how it is. So. so you do a white and then you also do, you do four wines, no? Yes, we do four, four wines. wines. And then of course, you know, we are in Chianti, we produce uh, our Chianti Reserva. We produce ah. a Reserva. We don't produce a regular Chianti. And there is a reason why, you know, small winery like mine and like there is so many around here. Uh, we need to focus to produce high quality wines. And mm. unfortunately, the name Chianti, it's, you know, it's a very famous brand, but you know, now it's like a, a supermarket brand. The regular <laughs> Chianti is just something that you can find all over the world in, uh, in any supermarket. So a small wine, we need to produce a reserva for don't compete, don't, you know, don't, don't compete with a big uh, corporation, let's say. True, they, true. they produce a million bottles a year, we produce thousands, we can compete in cost. You know, mm. so. uh, we produce a reserve. A reserve, a reserve means at least they have to be two years old. Yes. Okay, at least. Uh, the same, um, you know, the same uh, rules that we have to follow in the Chianti, at least they have to be 75% Sangiovese grape. Okay, but for my family, his reserva is still our volume. We produce 5,000 cases. Okay. And then we have the, the, the Super Tuscan. So the Super Tuscan now, you know, it's the crew here in Tuscany. Um, we really focus in the Super Tuscan of our best grade. Mm. Uh, our Super Tuscan is 100% Sangiovese grade. And of course, it's our best Sangiovese we selected for this wine. 
Then, for example, during the harvest, you know, we select the best Sangiovese grapes for the Super Tuscan. The, the name of my Super Tuscan is Cardisco. Mm. Cardisco is a medieval word that, that, seems, that means Sangiovese, like grape. Um, and this is, what, you know, we produce uh, about from 700 to 800 cases. Okay. You know, against the 5,000 cases of uh, Chianti Reserve. <laughs> I'm and, just uh, going to, to welcome the new people here, just to present you again so they know. So sure. we have Daniela, who is another uh, wine producer close to, to San Gimignano, Campo Chiarenti. Uh, and then we have uh, Daryl and some other people. So we're talking to Giuseppe Sala today from Il Selvatici Winery. And he's, uh, talk he's describing his wines now, the, the different wines they produce, and uh, a bit about the history of the wines. So you can continue. <laughs> yes. Uh, hello, everyone, also to the new one. And yes, we were talking about the Super Tuscan that... Uh, that uh, I, I don't know if, uh, Katarina, you know, the difference between, uh, you know, a Chianti production and a Super Tuscan production. So it means... Uh, uh, yes, but you, you know, explain they, it because I don't think everybody here knows it. So. Okay, you know the Chianti Tuscan is the region. Mm. Chianti is just uh, it's considered a county. Okay, that the word there is uh, yeah I think uh, a little bit over one hundred sixty wineries that we produce under this name. But anyway, uh, you must uh, the grape must to grow in Chianti. It's like a map. Okay. Mm. And you must have your land in Chianti, but not only, also your cellar. It means you can't move the grape uh, uh, mm. 10 feet outside because then it will be just a rectangle wine. Yeah. So, and you have everything has to be made here. The Super Tuscan, the important, you know, that uh, the grape are growing in Tuscany and your winery is in Tuscany. Then you can make any blend you want. Uh, the ninety percent probably of the Super Tuscan are a blend. Yes. Okay. For family tradition, we produce one hundred percent Sangiovese. Uh, like the Brunello, the difference is uh, we use uh, uh, sixty gallon um, French oak. Mm. Instead, then the big Slovenian oak, like uh, you know. The the traditional Brunello. Our Super Tuscan is always five years old. At mm. least it's aged five years. The last uh, 24 months in French Oak. And uh, it's a wine that last year got 91 ratings by Wine Spectator. The vintage 2009. We got uh, the highest we got, we got 93 with 2006. Um, okay. so but you do it 100% Sangiovese. Yes. You don't do any blend. I don't do any blend. That's in my family. It's in the last uh, 45 years, we produce 100% Sangiovese. In my family, it's really focused. It's really traditional with this grape. We don't have at the winery any French or international mm -hmm. grape. For example, we have the 80% is Sangiovese. Then we have Canaiolo for the blend. Mm -hmm. uh, for the Chianti blend, but just yes. then we have different clones of Sangiovese, okay, that you know give the best in different position of the vineyards. Of course, uh, you know the best vineyards are always in the south position, but you can do everything in the south position. <laughs> True. Okay. So and. Uh, but perhaps if you if you talk about a bit about the clones, because I don't know if if uh, if everybody here is. Uh, Hmm. They know that much about the different clones of a Sangiovese. I think sometimes they might mix up it, mix it up with other things. What it means? Yeah, it's not so easy to explain, especially <laughs> in, in a foreign language. But I'm gonna try. Uh, in uh, in, Tus in Tuscany, not in Tuscany. I'm sorry. In Italy, we have over. I'm talking about the Sangiovese grape. Okay, we have over 200 clones of Sangiovese. Okay. So mm -hmm. that's what it means. It means that all of those clones, that of course, they have 
different characteristics, but especially different characteristics. And uh, my, my family is 50 years that here in, you know, in our hill, here in Tuscany, we selected the, the clone that give the best in our microclima and in our terroir, I would say, okay? Mm. So, uh, of course, when we talk about Sangiovese, you can say also, you know, the Sangiovese di Romagna, but this is a, a totally different kind of Sangiovese. Completely Sangiovese. different thing. Completely <laughs> different, but completely different levels. But yeah. here is Tuscany example. Uh, we, try, uh, we try many times to do, because we do our own graft, okay? In every, in every uh, old vineyards when we make the new vineyards we make our own raft with our own uh, you know pruning uh, wood yes. okay? because we don't want to bring home disease that's why we draft all our vineyards okay yeah uh, and in the clones it it's very you have to be very good to and takes years for to understand which kind of Sangiovese clone works better or not in your uh, in your land, mm. with your climate, with your terroir, you know, with all like that. And uh, of course, uh, uh, you know, the same clone planted here make a great, you know, make a grape here, and then the same clone that maybe. It's uh, planted in Montalcino, give different hints to the wine, different taste. Yes. Of the wine. That's completely. Uh, my grandfather studied a lot and did a lot of trial with the with the Sangiovese here in Chianti, and uh, you know, and he had to change mind many times because mm -hmm. you know the wine is a science, okay? That really, 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 we don't know everything all yet. Mm, okay. There is true. something always that we have to learn every single day from outside, means the grape that is growing outside, and then once also you bring the cellar, because, you know, and especially every year with, you know, the technology help, but the technology you have to know how to use it too. <laughs> that's true. You know, so that's the, let's say in our small uh, Award in our small winery here, the technology is not important like it's important in the big or big wineries. Okay, the mm. technology is important when you handle big quantity. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So how many bottles do you do totally? Totally, we do about uh, I do in cases six thousand from six to seven thousand cases. So let's say seventy. About eighty thousand bottles, ninety thousand bottles. Okay. It depends a lot from the year, eh? because uh, yeah. uh, okay, the super Tuscan we don't produce every year, but just only mm. the great years. You know, in the last mm. years we were very lucky. We we got very good vintage in a row. I mean, so we didn't. Uh, what I remember so so in the last uh, maybe more than sixteen years, our vintage like. Uh, 2004 uh, or 2002 for us, was, and then the rest mm. one um, after another one. Very good, very good. Cool. So if we continue on the on the path of the the, the clones, uh, if you talk a bit more about what's specific of, of the terroir or the soil, just where you are in the uh, okay, yes. in the area between. Uh, that's a that's a good question. Isn't it? <laughs> what it gives to the to the wines? Why are they particular in your? Mm -hmm. Okay, what is particular <laughs> here to compare? Like, yes. uh, if you drive uh, five uh, miles, it's um, it's changing. Okay. Yes. Here is which is what is interesting about Tuscany and Italy in general. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, here, our soil is a mix of clay and uh, stone, okay. Mm. Uh, to compare exactly with the Chianti Classico, I'm talking about, let's say, Gaiola and Chianti. You've been many times, I, I, I guess. Yes. Okay. So they have more stone than clay. Here, mm. we have more clay than stone. So what's up in that? It's very rarely have to be, uh, 
very very hard uh, means uh, it's very rarely that we need that water yes exactly. they, we were just watering some baby vines when we plant the vines then for example during the summer it's very very difficult we had a year in the 2003 that we had like uh, three months with no rain we just uh, we just uh, give water to uh, the bed lines. We didn't even touch the because you know when the grape gets stressed, mm. it's a better wine. <laughs> true, true. That's so true. But let's say it's a mix of um, uh, clay and stone. In stone, like uh, the stone is typical. It's not really a rock. It's something mm. like uh, do you know the Galesto? The yes. name of the Pietra di Galestro. No, I don't know that in English. Uh, Daniela. Daniela is the vocabulary here. But I'll look it up. He knows all these words that I don't never remember. Uh -huh. uh, I'm sorry, I don't know some uh, words in English. <laughs> but uh, it's, um, it's a kind of, uh, it's not an, uh, an hard rock. It's something, you know, with the pressure you can break. Let's see if, if Daniel uh, gives us the answer because uh... oh, he doesn't answer. I cannot translate Galestro either. Galestro, okay. Galestro. I'll find it. Galestro. You know, the Galestro is also a name of a wine, eh? you know, a white wine. <laughs> yes. That, uh... It's because the name is given by this rock. So it's, uh, let's see if we find uh, English. Well, you can just uh, continue. The last one in English. Uh, uh no it doesn't even in translation a sort of gravel gravel stone i don't know in english the, is the name of the, uh, the stone composition it's true it's very it's very we say in italian we say friabile you know it's mm. uh, so that's the composition of the soil that yeah, and, okay interesting and, and every i have to say here the, the tuscany it's famous for that uh, you know, have microclima that, uh, you know, uh, probably plays, it had like here yeah, five minutes rain, like, <laughs> yes. like almost every day, so we are almost tired about that. And maybe example in Radha that it's here about 10 minutes drive, 15 minutes drive, uh, a friend of mine told me that uh, they didn't have any rain. So <laughs> that's the... Uh, well, also, also Saturday, I went to Rada because there was this Rada and the Bicchiere. Mm -hmm. yes. And uh, it was pouring down in Florence, and it was very nice weather in, in Rada <laughs> I know, in the I afternoon. Know. So. And uh, from here, we were seeing uh, because from my, my one in my home, you can see the reaction in Florence was very bad. You see the yeah. Like that, yes. True. Okay, so does anybody have any questions for Giuseppe? Uh, I think there was a new one, Larissa. So we're talking uh, with Giuseppe from uh, Is Salvatici Winery close to Montevarchi and Arezzo in Tuscany. And he's talking about, uh, right now, he was talking about the soil and, and other stuff in his winery. Yeah. Uh, so, do you, I don't know, what are you interested in, in talking about more, uh, the people who are listening here? We could, uh, you could talk more about uh, the area, or do you want to talk more about how the wines are affected by the... Let's talk uh, about that. I didn't finish about saying also my last wine. Yes, is, of uh, course. That is the, the Vincento. The Vincento is the, let's say, there is the diamond of my family, you know, we got... Uh, Six seven times with different vintage. We got 98 ratings wine spectator magazine. Oh, okay. And uh, this, this one, what is here? Is it's this little bottle? Is a uh, <laughs> 375. We produce a 375 and we produce only uh, 3,000 little bottles like that. It's always okay. uh, 13, uh, 13 years 
inside the small barrels. And you know, it's made with Malvasia grape. And uh, you know, it's a Malvasia that we pick usually on the hands depends on the weather, but it's the first uh, that we pick. You know, it's early when they are at. And uh, we pick this grape and we lay down all this grape in a room with two big fan for about five months. So mm. we really dry a lot this grape. Think about that each uh, 200 pounds, 100 kilo of this grape in February when we press, we make six little bottles like that against, uh, you know, the average of the, you know, fresh grape for the wine, make an average every 100 kilo, 200 pounds, like six, five, seven bottles. Mm. So if you think that this is 75, we produce 120. <laughs> So, and that's why it's very, very limited. And now it's about 12 years that uh, we have an exclusivity with the Ritz Carlton. And we sell, we have just a few bottles here that mm. we sell at the winery. At the winery we sell, but um, the limit is two bottles. So we don't sell more than two bottles at the time. Also, okay. because if not, we sold out soon the wine and the, you know, yeah, yeah. So we need to share a little bit to everyone. <laughs> So, so what is specific about uh, the Vinsanto? Because a lot of producers are doing Vinsanto, but it's very different in different areas. So. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, the Vinsanto, it's born uh, in Tuscany, the tradition of the Vinsanto. You know, when you go also to a restaurant like that, they give you the Vinsanto also at the hand, complimentary with some cantuccini for two days. <laughs> yes. right? Okay. Which is not the Vinsanto that you produced. Uh. No, absolutely not. Mine, <laughs> mine is not for, for the, for the Biscotti. Um, no, no, but also in quality, I meant. But it's a yes, huge yes, difference. yes. In, it's in quality, example. My Vinsanto has a very good combination that can be with cheese, like a Gorgonzola, Rockford, mm. strong flavor mm. cheese. And uh, now from the bottle, unfortunately, you can't see it, but... It's very thick. This one, um, you know, inside the wine, every grape, there is about a concentration of water, you know that, right? That goes from 15 to 16%. About. Okay. Mm. So yes. the, the Vinsanto, the my Vinsanto, the concentration of the water inside here is 4.5. So a little bit more than the olive oil. So it's very, <laughs> the viscosity, it's very thick. You know, yeah, it's, it's very dense. Can be very dense. dense. Mm -hmm. huh? And can be so. And the one of the characteristics of my Vinsanto is that I spend so much time, up 13 years at least, inside a small caratelli. We call caratelli the barrel for the Vinsanto. Mm, yes. And what's happening? In this many years, you know, the Vinsanto, the best place for to keep the Vinsanto the barrel is under the roof. Okay, yes. because it has to be in the winter with cold temperature, in the summer with the hot temperature. Okay. So you can mm -hmm. imagine my my home under the roof, the attic is full of caratelli. Okay. So what's happening during during the winter and during the summer? After many years, hot and cold, it's began like a balsamic vinegar. Means uh, it's completely oxidated. You can open this bottle and sip this bottle uh, once it's open in two three years. Never gonna change the flavor. You know the wine after cool. two three days, you have to you know you have to drink. Yes, it yes. it's full body wine or not, but you know there is always a limit. Okay, that uh, you yeah. cannot go through that. Because if not, then uh, you know, study process the vinegar. So that's the, mm. and that's how it's the Vincente. Uh So uh, because also when I had uh, another winery, which is called uh, Pietro Petroncini from San Miniato, they also do uh, a quite dense and a quite different uh, Vincenzo, which is also within the Chianti Chianti area, not Chianti Classico, of course, but Chianti. And they also told uh, told us that uh, it works best with uh, with cheese, mm -hmm. with blue cheese and, and similar, and also with foie gras. Uh, 
Yes. Uh, so I don't know. I don't know if there are any questions here about the pairings, uh, about the wines. I don't know if you would like to talk a bit about that because sometimes people are interested in, mm -hmm. <laughs> in the the best food with your uh, with the wines yes. you produce. Okay. Uh, I would like uh, first of all let's start again with the white because it was the first. Thing. Yes. <laughs> so because you know I produce only 250 cases of this white, and uh, there is a reason why because. I need to use that Malvasia because my white is 100% Malvasia. I use the Malvasia also for the Vincent. So mm. uh, the white has, uh, this Malvasia has a, uh, you know, concentrated aroma of, uh, you know, dry figs or uh, mm. walnuts. Um, um, what's the dish of Candida, Candida fruit? Try it. Candied fruit. Candied fruit. I think. Yeah. Candied fruit. It's of candied fruit and like that. So, uh, it's um, has this flavor of fruit bouquet with some lemon and like that. Has a very good combination, not only with fish, but also with white meat. Example: In the United States, uh, we are selling very well this wine to sushi bar. Oh, okay. the, the, pairing, the pairing with the raw fish, actually, it's better than the, with the cooked fish because, you know, it's Malvasia and it's a wine that it has 13 and a half alcohol volume. You need yes. some strong flavor with because if not, if you, it's going to go with light flavor, it's going to cover the taste of the wine, you know, the flavor of the wine are going to cover the flavor of the food. But... Yes. Uh, but also with white meat, I love that, you know, with, uh, uh, with pork or, you know, in Tuscany, we are big fan, you know, chicken and rabbit. <laughs> yes. I know that in the States, guys, nobody can eat the rabbit, but here it's a big... Uh, True. Yeah, a, so there's a question. Uh, I'm sorry if I interrupt you. Go ahead. Uh, they asked if, if your wines, uh, if they, where they can find them in the U.S.? Uh, okay, my wine you can find in the U.S. in in only three states because we are very small. Okay, so you can find my wine in Florida, in Georgia, and uh, in California, uh, and in Indiana. I'm sorry, but uh, of course, what's up in my Super Tuscan? You can find. Uh, at the steakhouse in these three states, four states, you can find that the steakhouse Ruth Chris, but it's a it's okay. a one it's, it's a bottle that costs uh, 140 a bottle. Um, in my website, anyone can go in my website. We delivery in the U.S. We have free delivery, free shipping. Okay. Okay, and uh, and the best price are on my website because you know. If you go buy uh, one of my bottles in a restaurant or in the States or in a, in a wine shop, you pay the three level system, right? The importer, yes. the distributor, and the retailer. Um, here at the winery, I do wine testing uh, almost you know, every single day. And 95% mm. uh, are Americans, and they come here, and, you know, and they can ship home a case or two. And then in the future, they, you know, they are repeat customers. You know, they yes. can go to my website and buy again. And everyone are in my, you know, I have like 6,000 private customers in my mail list that every month, you know, we send, I send out yeah. news, the new vintage and the new. Yeah. yeah. Plus. Oh, that's a good idea. And, and what I do, you know, during the winter, I live in the States. For five okay. months and a half, I live in the States. Uh, and uh, I got 12 years ago, I just started as a joke eh? because this one I just started as a, a joke because you know, here in, in Tuscany at the winery, January, February, there is really nothing to do, you know. We are pruning, that's it. But then, you know, the mm -hmm. wine is made, uh, there is not, the tourists are gone. Uh, 12 years ago, I started with my chef to do Tuscan wine dinner. So, you know, I was oh, having, okay. you know, my mail list already customers. So what I do is, 
what I do, what the chef does for four courses in combination with my wine. And we do that okay. privately, means we go in the home of my customer and the chef cook these four courses that of course is a menu that they choose in advance, uh. okay? And we show up with uh, the ingredients, the wine, and of course, also the olive oil, because we cook with our olive oil. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. And uh, this one uh, start to be, you know, it start like a job. And now we began, yeah. uh, we do 40 dinners in two months and three weeks. Yeah, that's a lot. It's a lot. Usually, I'm going to issue my newsletter for January, February, and March. That's not the month uh, that we do these events. I'm going to yeah. that in the, the first week of August. Usually oh, okay. in three weeks we are overbooked for January February, okay. March. Well that's interesting. So guys, if you if you are in any of the areas where he goes, and I'm if sure you can uh... if some if somebody wanna know more about that, you can go to my website and subscribe yourself for to receive the newsletter. That's how you can learn uh, uh, our mm. Taliban will be because usually you know we do like uh, five or six states in, mm. in almost three months and you know every year some trying to change uh, also if we like uh, we love too much to stay in the south most but you know <laughs> uh, we can be everywhere of course in three months so usually we pick the states where we go in mm -hmm. example, in Arizona, we stay one month because uh, we start to do a lot of those events. Well, uh, um, in February is um, baseball spring training. With, uh, for the, uh, ah, that's true, that's true. So, and we start to, to do those events for a lot of baseball players and you know, doctors, managers, and all like that. So we spend one month there in Arizona, but there is a reason why we love the weather, you know, in, in February, it's warm, makes warm, nice, like 25 degrees, you know, it's like uh, 80 uh, Fahrenheit or something like that. Yes, yes. So that's... Uh, cool. And it's 12 years, and I'm going to do that again this year, because yeah. not only, it's, you know, it's good for the business, but it's also super fun. I mean, we meet so many yeah. people, it's, you know, I love to meet people. So, do they choose the menu, or you choose the menu? I didn't understand. Do they do they give any no the, the people who want to to make this this uh, participate? Yes. Do they have a say in what they want to eat, or uh, do you decide? We give them um, we give them a menu that there is options. Of course, it have to be you know the same menu if uh, the people um, the the guests are twenty people say okay have to be the same for everyone. Of, yes, course, no, of course, we cook something different if you are a vegetarian or vegan or something, of course, we want to know that. Yeah. And um, we do a menu in advance, like with five, six different appetizers, a new shoes, you know, example, the first course, it's always pasta or tortellini. It's always made with pasta, fresh, and, mm. you know. And, um, and they choose that, of course, maybe, you know, we help you to choose uh, and to understand what maybe you like, we can, you know, mm. suggest that they highlight of the tour. Every year with I, the chef try always to change something. Okay. And the chef is a friend of yours, you said, no? Oh, yeah. The chef uh, is a dear friend of mine that owns a restaurant in Tosi Hills. But, you know, it's very, okay. it's very seasonal here. Mm. So let's say that he's, it's open until uh, December. So okay. then he closed the restaurant and he come with me for about three months. Okay. Okay, so I read on the website also that, that you started out, when did your father, you're the third or fourth generation of, of wine producers? I'm the third generation. Okay, so you started out in the 1950s or something? Yes, 1953, we have the first, uh, the first vintage with the grapes. Yeah. Okay. But uh, when my grandfather, let's say, he had a big job about uh, turning in a really a winery was made by um, by my dad Fausto because my grandfather yeah. Giuseppe named it like me 
you know, I was named like him. <laughs> um, <laughs> he but he he moved from Lake Como, born and raised in Lake Como, and moved here. My dad was like a few years old. Okay. I moved here for just the property that was already named in Selvatici. Mm. Is the name of the winery, but it's also the name of is the property name. Okay. The 1500. We have documents that talk that uh, you know we have map since the 1500 that was the same name. Okay. Uh, it was like a farm in the beginning. He bought, you know, there was of course some grapevines, okay, but mm. there was also um, cereal like. Uh, um, corn, you know, then Tuscan is began, you know, well known in the wine uh, and like that. So before, uh, you know, the wine, the wine is began, fam you know, well known in the world in Tuscany about 40 years ago. Mm. Okay. About, <laughs> yeah. So there's a lot of uh, people from Lombardy who are coming here to buy wineries because also last week I had a guest who is uh, from yeah, to, I have a to Milan. Yeah, I had just people yesterday. I have to tell you, uh, to me, here it's funny to say that uh, sometimes I'm so happy when I see some Italian because uh, the 99.9% .9 here are um, tourists, foreigners, <laughs> you know, yes. not, uh, not Italian. So yesterday, just yes, but you know, it's happening maybe one or two couple a month. Mm. The rest for oh, me, it's, it's all uh, most Americans. Then there is a lot of North European. Now it's mm -hmm. uh, Sweden and Finland. It's really pick it up a lot, a lot. Okay, okay, interesting. So let's see if there are any questions. Anyone who wants to to ask Giuseppe something. Uh, they seem to be a bit. Greg, do you want to jump in? Um, usually he jumps in to make some questions also. So Gregory is from the UK and... Uh, okay, now he disappeared. Oh, now he's back. Anyway, just to, to make it a bit more interactive. So let's see. Otherwise, I ask the questions all the time. It's, it's, uh, Hi. Hello. <laughs> Hi. I don't know. If Hi. So this is Greg, and he's from uh, the UK. He's also a bit of a wine uh, blogger and wine site website. So if you want to have any questions for Giuseppe and his winery close to Montevarchi. I was just. Uh, can you hear me? Okay. Yes, yeah, yes. Okay, then. I was just checking, so I wasn't sure if my volume uh, was up all right. And, no, I was just reading your website, so I was just catching up, having been uh, late to the late to the party and uh, catching up on the blab this evening. Um, yeah, I was just interested in your wines because it looks like you've got quite a, an interesting selection. Plus, obviously, uh, Super Tuscan, which obviously, you know, who doesn't like yeah. Super Tuscans? Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I guess you must sell a lot in America because they obviously love it in America. So, uh. yes, we have, uh, yes, the, the Super Tuscan, of course, you know, the suitable production also to compare with the, the, the Chianti that we produce. So, that, uh, let's say, it's pretty easy to be sold out in that. Yeah. You know? So, and then also, I think because uh, the people are very attracted also. That it's one hundred percent Sangiovese. Yes, mm. which and is quite rare because a lot of people uh, grow Cabernet Sauvignon, don't they, to blend? So, uh, yeah. Correct. Well, that's the whole Bolgheri idea. Now that you have the, because also it was the the, the grapes that were more yeah that worked well there. An so. Example, I, I love Bulgari and uh, you know Ornellaia. It's mm. one of my favorite wine, Maseto, like that. Uh, but it's totally different. They they uh, they have the influence of the ocean. Yeah. Okay. Yes. They they grow great cabernet. Yes. Here, in in in, in land, if you taste a cabernet or something like that, you get disappointed. 
You know, it's not, mm -hmm. it's completely really the terroir over there do something that uh, you cannot replicate over here. Yeah, uh, and also and also the right soil. Well, that was also what they discovered, like, also in the early 60s or when it was. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, and also the right soil, because, uh, you know, Cabernet is quite uh, particular on soil. You know, it can change the whole development of the Absolutely. wine, you know, if, if, if the soil is... You know, it likes granite. It likes, you know, very sort of mineral rich uh, soils. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I love, I suppose I love uh, the diversity of Italian grapes myself. So, you know, why, why have a, have a, have a sort of uh, French or even, you know, a sort of um, a mainstream grape variety when you have so many great grape varieties over there? And but uh, that's the. You do you do barrique or big bar barrel for the the super Tuscan? I didn't understand. Excuse me. Do you do you age it in uh, in big barrel or in uh, barrique? Small in barrique. Okay. Uh, okay. Two hundred twenty-five liter. Yeah. Okay. So two twenty-five. Yeah. yeah. And is it a bit of a mixture of um, uh, sort of French and American oak, or is it is it is it? Correct. Uh, Correct. It's a yeah. mix. Let's say yeah. seventy. Yeah. Percent French uh, and the three percent American oak. Yeah. What I'm, uh, I'm really liking a lot. Yeah. I really like a lot the the new American oak that we can find around here. Of course, I buy here. I yeah. don't buy in the U.S. You know because I'm a small yeah. buyer. Yeah. yeah. And wh which um, which preference for uh, forest have you for your for your French barrels? Which you know is a, a never is it never forest or Never forest, but I use a lot of Cabernet Rouge. He you know? disappeared. Oh, he's gone. <laughs> Hello? Be back. Here's, here's me getting technical on barrels now, because um, with um, with barrels, <laughs> especially in France, uh, especially like uh, one of the producers I've worked for in, in Campaign, for example, um, he, mm. he, uh, he selects just particular um, coopers from particular forest regions just for yeah. the style of uh, the oak. I was, I was yeah. just talking about. Oh. <laughs> I was just talking about barrels. I just was curious to know if you had any particular uh, type of barrel from particular forest from France, in particular, or, or are you pretty much no, open? No, it's to... not. It's not in particular from. I think uh, actually I have to ask now about that because you know I'm buying uh, here from a company that import here. Yeah. Okay. And um, you know I'm buying the same. I think I made the same one that uh, my grandfather was buying. Yeah. I mean, it's exactly the same company, but that's a good question. I'm going to ask her. Oh, no, uh, just curious. I, I work at, well, I worked in Bordeaux, but I work in Champagne also, uh, making okay. wine. And um, I know the producer that I work for in uh, Champagne. Um, he makes uh, Champagne in the Krug method. So they, they, ferment a per percentage of the wine in, in yeah. oak and it'd be a mixture of new and old oak and he normally has about 20 percent of new barrels every year but uh, he generally only well he generally buys from uh, the Nevers region uh, yeah. of, so it's sort of central uh, France which is yeah. reputedly the best oak in in France but uh, I was I was just curious uh, I know my friend in uh, in Bordeaux is is less less worried too about the oak <laughs> You know, but uh, you know he's got a different a different um, pursuit, I should say, for his winemaking. Sure. Okay. So there was another question also from Chris: uh, If you age all the four wines in bar in oak barrels? No, no, no. Uh, just only my super Tuscan age in the barrel. The white Malvasia, just the fermentation in the barrel. Okay. Then uh, the Chianti is just only still temp. Okay, okay. And then uh, talking about the barrel, go back to the barrel. Yeah. I use the barrel once because um, uh, I don't know if you've never heard about uh, a bacterial. You know, when you, when you, we, we bottle in the wine, from the oak, uh, we take out the wine, it's impossible to take out all the wine. There yeah. Is, uh, you know, there is a little yeah. hole like that. So, Let's say that a glass, a quantity has a glass, you know, can, can leave, you can live inside like this. If you don't fill up, let's say that you use twice or three times. 
if you don't fill up soon the barrels, they would like to stay in a couple hours. Yeah. It can create this bacterial. Of course, it's not dangerous for the human being, or it means for big, yeah, but really change, can change the flavor of the wine. Mm. Okay. And I'm very scared about that because I taste some wine, okay, that they would have uh, been denied because that smell and that's due by this bacterial is scientific proof. Okay. proof. Okay. So that's why with my dad we are also because we don't need so many means we produce eight hundred cases of our super testing. Yeah. Uh, we mm. have like um, sixty barrels, less than sixty barrels. Yeah. So it's also I, I can understand who has like uh, you know a thousand barrels like that, hundreds and hundreds. Yeah. It's a, it's a huge expense. Yeah. Mm. But uh, for us, that's with respect to like that. Do um, you reuse uh, the, the barrels for your lesser wines or just not reuse them at all? And now, because it's dark outside, if not, I was showing you, we use for to put flowers on it. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> you recycle in another way. Yeah, we recycle in another way. Because, you know, if, if we give them back, uh, mm. uh, they give you... I don't know, 10, 20 euros yeah. back. So yeah. that is now really, it's not convenient to give them back. Fair enough. So. And where do you live in the UK? Where do you live in the UK? Where? Uh, I'm in the southwest, which is um, the opposite side to, to London. So, okay. So, uh, but I, I, I work, um, well, I've worked in, in vineyards in the UK, but also uh, mostly in France. Okay. Sorry. Because my wine, you can find the only place in UK, in London, you can find is a Vinopolis. I don't know if you know. Oh, Vinopolis. Yeah, I know Vinopolis. Yeah, I've been there. Yeah. yeah. It's a science, probably science the 90s, that we give them like 50 cases mixed a year. Oh, right. Okay. They got a little bit of mix of everything, just one little pallet. And we give. Also because we, we, don't, we don't have quantity, you know. No, no, no. Well, you probably have a limited, you know, in terms of your release, probably most of your production is, you know, you have some for your home market and obviously your export. And then you probably have very little free stock anyway, don't you? Because you must have a lot of subscribers for, uh, you know, for your wines. Correct. And then uh, or probably you missed that uh, in the beginning because uh, um, in Italy, the only place where you can get my wine or taste my wine, it's here at the winery. We don't sell in Italy. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we sell uh, 80, 80, 85% in the in the United States, about 10% in Japan, and the 5% mixed here in Europe, but really small quantity here in Europe. Yeah. And uh, also in my, in my wine class, of course, most are Americans, but there is, you know, there is English, there is uh, uh, Swedish, there is some of mix of Europe, yeah. but very small. I would talk about the five percent probably. Yeah. Mm. I mean, the yeah. Super Tuscans are very popular in the UK. I mean, I think probably anywhere now because they they have a good. Um, reputation and uh, people are always looking for you know high quality wines of, of any country but I think um, you know many people have learned about super task and so when people have uh, developed the, the, their palates and uh, they obviously want to go to a higher level then uh, you know they will make their way to a super Tuscan range of wines but uh, yeah. you know I remember yeah. the first time I had uh, Saskia and Tigna you know, it's just wow. You know, you know, it sort of blow me away. Yeah. When was it for your first time you had uh, the Sassicaia? Uh, ninety-two, or in, in yeah. 90, so in 90, 1992, and I think it was. Uh, it was probably the eighty-six, eighty-seven. 80, 80, I think it was eighty-five or eighty-six. Yeah, eighty-six, eighty-five. Eight, because it was, before yeah. uh, they had more time for to age, and now they so requested yeah. that uh, I just. Have had in the states uh, the 2011. Think about that. It's so, crazy, isn't it? And yeah. it was last year. Then uh, uh, 
when I think I talk about great wine, for me, the sasikaya, you know, yeah. when you produce something a little bit in big quantity, then you lose the quality. Or Nelaya, it's more uh, constant. You know? Yeah. Uh, then also, there is, the, you know, also, but, also the price, because now when I look at it, because I, I worked uh, for a wine merchants in the, in the 90s, and, uh, you know, so was selling sasikaya and tignello and, and it was in by today's prices so cheap, <laughs> but oh, yeah. um, oh, now yeah. it's just a crazy price. <laughs> so. but, you know, you're talking about now, Sassikaya, we are over 400,000 bottles a year. Yeah. yeah. So, mm, that's true. That's what I, like I say to my dad. You know what I say to my dad when they say, you know, the Sassikaya winery, say, no, you don't call it winery, call bank. Because it's a bank, it's not a wine. <laughs> <laughs> True. Yeah, that's probably so, about right. Yeah. So, Chris, uh, I will let you explain this uh, because you need to talk. Uh, so, Chris was asking again about uh, not having uh, grasped the difference between a super Tuscan and a regular Tuscan. No, excuse me. So, if you, you explain it again to him. Ah, the super, okay, first of all... So he, didn't, he didn't graph the different, difference between a super Tuscan and a regular Tuscan, or a regular Tuscan you can't really say because there's so many denominations, yes, but... I say maybe super Tuscan, the difference between a super Tuscan, a Chianti, or a Rosso di Toscana, that's how yes. it's divided. So, first of all, super Tuscan, you have to know that it's a, you know, a nickname given from the US 15 years ago, 20 years ago. But never you will read in a label Super Tuscan because it's against the law. Our law here is called, you know, IGT, Indicazione Geografica Tipica. Okay. Exactly. Actually, an IGT, that also a Rosso di Toscana, is an IGT. Okay. Rosso di Toscana, usually we say here in Tuscany, is the house wine. Okay. Mm. That you can have, on, you know, on the carafe, that or you can have in both, it means in both mm. or in the both. Yes. Uh, can be the same, it means can be the same, can be called IGT because both of them, Super Tuscan is an IGT, the Rosso Yuscan is an IGT. IGT, what means? Indicazione geografica, geographic, so means that can be made in Tuscany, all over Tuscany, all over the region, can be made. Uh, mm. um, a super Tuscan or an IGT. Then will be the winemaker or the family that produced that, this wine to separate these two IGT, the one top quality, you know, and one house wine. Okay. Yes, exactly. The really big difference are in the Chianti because, you know, the, this is, this is a 1995. Okay, you see the Super Tuscan doesn't have any pink neck label when... Uh, where is... Oh, I don't have any Chianti here, but anyway, the Chianti has the pink neck label, okay? So it's the DOG. Mm. That means nomination of original control and guarantee. You must have the land and the cellar where you make the wine and everything inside the borderline of Chianti, okay? Of the Chianti domination. Yes, the Chianti yes, domination. The rest, a regular a, a Super Tuscan or Rosso di Toscana can be made over the, the region. You can be north, south, west, the important that you are in Tuscan. Exactly. And I think he was very happy with the description. He said he, he, says he learns a lot. So. <laughs> oh, also, also, in the beginning, they were Vino de da tavola is that correct vino da tavola, vino da tavola. Yeah. actually vino da tavola there is still this ah. uh, denomination mm. with vino da tavola you do for us there's something below the rosso di toscana mm. so it's a uh, cheaper price too but doesn't exist anymore this denomination means nobody use any more this denomination we can if we want but uh, it's too much generic Mm, that mm. we don't use anymore. Mm. Also because uh, you have to know that uh, the people, uh, they want, they love to see Toscan on the label, so they love much more <laughs> to Toscan than uh, red table wine, you know? <laughs> <laughs> True. 
So. Well, it's fair enough. I mean, they, they want to see what uh, where they are when they're here, what they drink. Uh, any more questions, Greg? Do you want to? Uh, I suppose I was just curious about viticulture and, um, you know, is everything just still traditional uh, grown in, in your vineyard in terms of yes. your vines are still... Um, uh, obviously, this is vinifera, but but the way you train them and sure, vinifera and then we do the guillo. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. and uh, of course so we pruning for to have a small quantity. We are not interested in the quality. Yeah. Okay. And uh, when we when we do the new a new vineyards, okay, mm -hmm. example, I had my grandfather seventy five years old vineyards. We yeah. we made our own graft. Right. Okay. Mm. Okay. Because uh, we are very worried about disease and all like that. Uh, now yeah. it's really, especially in Tuscany, uh, I don't know English. We call Malvelesca. It's get dry the the vine. Right. Okay. Ah, okay. It, it's dry oh, step right. by step. The you know in the year, like in four or five years, a vine can die. Yeah. So it's trunk, like yeah. a trunk trunk disease. Yeah. Trunk yes. disease. Yeah. 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 And and with um, you're still hand picking because obviously you want quality. Yeah, yeah. 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 Hand -picking, hand -picking. But uh, I think most people who want quality hand yeah. picks, yeah. I think it's oh, very yeah. difficult to. But, but all yeah. all of your wines are hand picked. All my wines are hand picked. Yeah. Yes, yeah. that's good. You know, you we have a uh, ten hectares, means, uh, and we have like during the harvest about uh, thirty people. I want to bring. Um, Soon the grapes inside uh, uh, because if they start to rain, then it's a problem. So yeah. I had, uh, mm. you know, I have seven employees every day. Yeah. Plus I have seasonal employees, you know. Yeah. In about two weeks and a half for the harvest, and then about uh, fifteen people for three months for the pruning. Right. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Anyway, when you have time, you are welcome to visit my yeah, winery. Good. Yeah, maybe I'll maybe I'll come and do some pruning for you. So uh, I know I know I know wine producers are always happy to have people that can prune. So absolutely, because it's always difficult to find good pruning. Yeah, and uh, as long as is it snow when you're pruning? No, no, Not here so and then uh, my guys are spoiled when there's if because it's very rare. It's, it's snowing here. If it's snowing, you stay home. You don't go out. Oh right. <laughs> No, you don't go out. Yeah. It's like when it's raining, you don't go you're, out. You're a nice <laughs> boss. <laughs> Actually, I have to tell you, uh, uh, doing especially because we start uh, after uh, New, Year, you know, New, New Year's Eve in the beginning of January. Yeah. Uh, most of the time, if we have kind of frost here in the morning, I let them start at 10 o'clock because oh, wow. I don't like, we, we don't want to, when you cut and it's frozen and you have to move, you risk to broke. That's right, and also you risk, you risk damage to the to the canes, don't you? So, mm -hmm. yeah. so no, no, we, we that's a good that's a good them. excuse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and do you have do you have two hours for lunch? Oh yeah, in two hours for lunch, of course, and then a siesta, man. Sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> when can I start? <laughs> when you want, when I mean, you want. If, if, if you know how to pruning, you can oh, yeah. come here yeah. in the beginning of January. I think I think at best I'm about seventy five vines an hour, so that's kind of my, oh, that's cool. kind of my best my best time I think. So. But you know what? Uh, uh, here we not we don't we, we don't prove you like that. You gotta go slowly. We chat, you know, and like that. Okay. So. <laughs> I, I have to learn the the local customs, yeah, and the culture. Absolutely, yes. because you know you were in France. In France, they are too fast and too busy. Well, this this was in England, but yeah, it, I don't know. France ah, is yeah. still still France is quite relaxed, and they have, they have generally have two hours for lunch, and they. They think I'm a bit strange if I want to go back to work within an hour. They say like, no, yeah, yeah, no, no, yeah. you you rest, you rest now, you know. So, <laughs> well, it sounds good yeah. to rest. Yeah. I mean, for hard work. So, yeah, or, yeah. or they say well, like, have more wine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I drink more wine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> good. Me, during the harvest, you know, I'm unfortunate to I I, I had some uh, you know university student too. 
Okay. If you start to give them wine at lunch, it's a disaster. Oh, yeah, no. Mm. It's like drinking heavy. I, I mean, I don't know that I drink heavy anyway, but um, drinking for me, even at har like harvest time, I, I generally I work in the calf or in the in the winery. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm in the in the winery at like five o'clock in the morning. And some of my, my French sort of uh, work friends, they're, they're having wine and cheese and bread, you know, and I'm getting the coffee machine going because there's <laughs> no way I can drink wine at that time of the morning. So, yeah. Yeah, me too. But, you know, here, uh, you know, after lunch and after dinner, here we have grappa, you know that, right? Oh, yeah, um, yeah. Yeah. No, that's fair enough. My dad, my dad, he drinks grappa after lunch and after dinner every single day. It's one shot, not that. Um, yeah. A, but, <laughs> But it's funny, I, if, you, I, I, if you just have small quantities of wine uh, you know, whilst you're going through the day, it does keep you going, you know, especially if you're doing like a, you know, 12, 14, 16 hour day, it's, it makes it easier. Yes. Well, I think there was this other wine producer who was here, I think, a couple of months ago, and she also talk, told us that uh, until some years ago, the old people still brought like for breakfast and lunch, the, oh, yeah. the bread, the uh, cheese and the wine bottle. Oh, yeah. So. Oh yeah, I was just talking a couple of days ago with some of my friends uh, in the North Italy, in the Veneto region. Yeah. In the morning they have Bianchetto, Bianchetto means the white. They have a, or, uh, you know, the, the grappa inside the calf in the morning and all that. Completely, we, we say here in Tuscany, they are 50 years ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> so... <laughs> anyway. but the, well, that's very Veneto and Friuli, I think. But the, but the harvest time is the best period because the, there is such a good atmosphere. Everybody's happy and not just yeah, from alcohol, is, but you know, so, is happy, including yeah. the owner. If the if the weather forecast say the weather would be good, yeah, yeah, you know, we would be very happy. Yeah. If sometimes it starts to rain and like that, we get cranky. That's the problem. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, that's the thing. It, it, I think the, kind, the last kind of few weeks before the harvest is always down to luck. You know, it's you, you pray for the good weather and uh, you hope everything stays nice and consistent. Yeah, mm. absolutely. It's very important. And it, it, now, you know, this year didn't start too well. Because well, no. did you have frost as well? Did you have bad frost? No, no, we didn't no. have any any frost. The frost ah. they had it's funny. They, the frost they had that this spring that they had in the south of Italy, not oh, here, really? not here. And uh, the trouble is, uh, come on, it's almost spring every day, and uh, we did. It means I'm still. I have the the shirt now, but I have the jacket for to go out. Then I'm in the cellar now. Yeah. It's uh, the highest temperature is 21 degrees today. Yeah. And for us, it should be like 29. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not seeing. Yeah, it's um, very. It's very strange spring. You must say. Very strange. Very strange. <laughs> it's a lot, a lot of rain. It's strange. We it, usually in in Italy in Tuscany we were gonna have, you know, the rainy season was always November, December. Yeah. Didn't rain at all last year. It started to rain after the New Year's and uh, wow, and yeah, a lot. Of course, we need it too. But now you know we need the sun because uh, yeah, if not, mm -hmm. uh, it's a problem. It's funny how yeah. climate climate change has, has really affected a lot of um, wine regions and, and grown seasons are very disrupted, you know. Like am I so going there's a, Sorry. There's a question here from a new guy, from Nazim. He's not a new guy. He usually follows me sometimes. Uh -huh. uh, he's an American. I think he lives in Milan, if I'm not incorrect. And he wants to ask you about if you're starting to worry about the effect on your vineyard by the, the change in the weather conditions. You know, uh, for sure we are thinking about something that, uh, but um, my father say always like that, you know, when we, ha we have, you know, all this bad weather flooding here, flooding there, the history say that we had also in the past. Mm -hmm. Of course, what we had in the past, we had something, you know, a lot, all, all at once. Mm -hmm. Now we have like months 
you know, in a row that uh, can rain every single day. It means an hour every single day. Because here, today, just did uh, a shower, and then back in the sun again. This morning, we had fog. I never saw the fog uh, uh, <laughs> July 8th. June 8th, excuse me. Yeah, yeah. So never saw the fog in my, here in my hills. I, mean, I saw the flat, you know, not here. Uh, definitely the weather is changing, yes. That's, uh, but uh, I, my, my grandfather was saying uh, all the time, if you are a farmer, you are under the sky. So. <laughs> well, that's very true. Yes. And also are my you... dad, you know, sometimes we... You know, we can we get upset. So you don't get upset because if not, you gotta change job. No. Yeah. But but also the vine, the vine is uh, it lives for a struggle. You know that the vine is mm. is a plant that it always struggles. That is the nature of the vine. So mm. it is always open to all the elements and whatever's happening. So absolutely, you know, it's very mm. very adaptable uh, plant. Very adaptable. Very adaptable. Mm. Yes, but. Uh, of course, if I had to choose a very wet season or a very dry season, I choose the very dry season. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Also, if I'm not able to give, uh, you know, irrigation, water, but yeah. it's always better. For my wine, it's always better the dry season. True. Well, yeah, you, you're going to have for, more concentration, aren't you? For big super Tuscan, you know, you, you need a good grape outside because... But to make a great wine, first you have to have, you know, a good grape outside. Good grapes, yeah. yeah. That's the, <laughs> the important thing, I think. If you don't have good grapes, then it's most hard. important thing. Mm. Yeah. True. Okay, so I'm sorry, Nadzim, we were just at the end here, uh, but you can listen to the replay if you want, I think. Uh, I don't know, do you have anything to add, Giuseppe or Greg? Or Nadzim, uh, I think it's been very interesting. Yeah, it's extreme, been, extremely uh, interesting. Yeah, very good. It's a good. new so area. Of, so... Jump in a plane and come on, come over here. We spend a day together. <laughs> don't, don't tempt me. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like that far away from jumping on a plane right now. Oh, yeah, well, definitely. You know, and funny, you can come anytime. I hear spend days a week. So. <laughs> okay. No, no, but we will, we will visit now. I haven't even been there, so I oh, told him that I've okay. only been to some other winery, but it's on the other side of Montevarchi, apparently. So. I have to. So I, I keep telling K Katerina I have to come because. She has so many good vineyards that I must visit. So, uh, yeah, the list is getting longer. Absolutely. So we should there. arrange a trip to, to, to your winery when, uh, Definitely. Yeah. when the people Absolutely. are coming. I'm here seven days a week until November 1st. Then from November to April, I'm in the States. But I'm here at the season. Then, then you're in Beverly Hills, yeah? Uh, I, uh, I wish. No, no. <laughs> I, live in, I live in the in Florida most of the oh, time. All right. Okay. Okay. Well, it's Back good. Some, it's lovely in Florida, especially that time. It's nice and, you know, even temperature. Yeah, it's good. Mm. I love that when it's in the winter. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Mm. And Excellent. I love also to visit California and going around with the wines. Oh, really? You live in Miami. I think Nazim here lived in Miami for 22 years, he says. So. Uh huh. He's, uh... <laughs> there you go. Do you want to jump in, uh, Nazim? I don't know if you want to talk to Giuseppe yourself. Yeah, and uh, great. I, I been in Oregon last year, two two years ago, in Oregon, and then in Washington State. Very interesting. Yeah. The, the Walla Walla Valley. Yeah. Very interesting. Very interesting. Did you, did you like the wines? You like the wines of Oregon and uh, Washington you State? Know, you know, I'm a, not a big. It's my it's my palate. I'm not a big fan of Pinot Noir. No. My palate, of mm. course, I can recognize a very well, you know, well job, okay? They do, yeah. the, the quality, it's, it's um, uh, very, very good. good. I yeah. think actually better than California now. Yeah. Uh, mm. uh, Washington, very impressed with the book, I believe, Frank. Yeah. Mm. Very impressed. But, but also, there's a lot of good uh, producers there new, using Italian varietals, you know, like Sangiovese and, uh, you know, a lot of interesting blends coming out. I think it's different. It's difficult for a Tuscan to, to talk about Sangiovese. Okay, I don't know. I don't know if you know. That was one of my 
probably the first 100% Sangiovese created in California from the winery Luna. I don't know if you've ever heard. Yeah, I've heard of that. Yeah. Okay. This bottle, the, the cheapest weights were to buy the winery, and it was $70. That kind, of, that kind of Sangiovese here doesn't sell for five. Yeah. Because uh, they have very high CDC. Mm. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm sure um, that the Sangiovese, I don't know, it's unfortunately, or fortunately for us, give the best just only here. <laughs> now, I'm, talking about, I'm, I'm talking about to produce. 100% Sangiovese, and then if yeah, you blend it, yeah. it's a different way, okay? That's right. Thing, okay? But that's also why they, they, they grow, so, I mean, the plasticity of the of the, the vine, no? That, that some grapes are better in uh, a bit everywhere, like the Chardonnay or the Cabernet, you can, you can grow in quite Okay, now forget about, regions. forget about Bulgari. But if, uh, yes, but I mean, like for Sangiovese, it's not a plastic grape in that sense, because mm -hmm. it's... But example, if... Uh, if in Tuscany, if you come from California, you drink some Cabernet Franc, Cabernet Sauvignon in California, then you come here in Tuscany, you can find, because the band in the last 20 years brought some, you know, cab also here in land in Tuscany, you get disappointed because uh, it's not a full body wine like uh, you can create in California because the sun, the, the cab, it's a grape that love, I really love, love, love to be more stressed than this kind of yeah. Okay, Here it doesn't get so stressed because here this is not the climate right. for to arrive, you know, temperature. And so that's why it's not. Uh, mm -hmm. but, but definitely I love, uh, I love uh, also Zipandel, great, great yeah. Zipandel now in yeah. California. Yeah. Have you ever had um, uh, wine from uh, Sean Thackeray? I don't know if you've heard of him, Sean Thackeray. I can maybe, yeah. he, he makes really like small, it's like garage wine, you know, he's a garageista, you know, so it's uh, the only, the essence, pretty much, you you probably love it because he's probably the same, you know, he's, he's striving for quality, but also to, to make something which is uh, unique every time. So, so even, mm -hmm. even the blend changes, but he makes some great wines. And if you, if you're over that way, or if, even in America, because we very rarely see them in the U uh, the UK now. Um, but I remember in the, in the 90s, certainly when I worked for Odd Bins, um, you know, we'd probably, in my shop, I'd probably get one case of his wine and, um, you know, it was sold before I'd opened the box because, uh, and I'd only sell it individual bottles to different customers because, uh, you know, that's how much demand it was. So, and obviously one for me, obviously. So, um, but, um, but yeah, so, but there are, there are some fantastic wines, you know, and interesting blends. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yes. And also, also try, I don't know if you, you've tried anything from uh, Russian River, like their, yes. <clears throat> their wines yes. are definitely good, you know, Very especially good. like Zinfandel or, or even Pinot Noir. Mm -hmm. They make, uh, you know, I'm not a, I'm a for red wines, master, but they make some Fumé Blanc over there at the mm. Russian River, yeah. at the River End. The River End, it's called the River yeah. End. Yeah. It's, it's beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. But you know, you need like a one hundred dollars for a bottle. I know it's absolutely crazy, isn't it? <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. True. That's the power of the U.S. You know? That's, uh... Well, yeah, but it just shows you in the in a very short period of time. You think <clears throat> pretty much from nineteen seventy six when they had the Judgment of Paris, everything changed, and then they've obviously developed you know their own you know, palette for their own wines, let alone anything from, from Europe. And, uh, you know, they can pretty much sell whatever they want now for any price. You know, it's just, and obviously the the Chinese and the Japanese and other markets are obviously putting demand on that as well. So, um, you know, it's, uh, it's funny how wine industry has changed so much in, you know, even 20, 30 years, let alone oh, yeah. 50 years. Yeah. Probably from when your vineyard first started to now is just, Com completely, completely, different. completely yeah. different wines, but yeah. also completely, yeah. 
Okay, my my dad uh, forty five years ago, most of the business was uh, selling the wine in bulk. Yes, mm. yeah, which seems crazy yeah. now, doesn't it? You know, you wouldn't, you just can't imagine that today, can you? You know, it's the same in Bordeaux. You know, they would ship stuff in, you know, either big barrels or you know, just mm -hmm. it'd be sold in barrel and then bottled at source. You know, um, it's just unbelievable. You know, yeah. Whereas and then, you know, we bottling about the sixty five percent of our production, sixty seven yeah. percent. I think we are Chianti. We don't bottle. We don't want to be in competition with the big corporation. No. So we no. sell to them in bulk. Uh, my family over four years we. We supply Rufino. Yeah, you know they they have request. Uh, they produce one twenty of their request, so they have to buy. It. So we we sell to them our regular Chianti that we don't bottling. We sell to them, and they blend the with their wines for supermarket. You know, most of them. Yeah, well, it's better to. For your perspective, it's just better to stay away from supermarkets or oh, big yeah. organizations. Yeah, I think it's, you know. uh... Also because uh, a winery like mine um, would be never on, uh, able to deliver it to supermarket because uh, you need a special seller, you need a special uh, logistic for do that yeah. also. And but also it's, it's two different it's kind of market. Yeah, yeah, it's not good for business either because uh, the problem with supermarkets, they, they are very, you know, one year they love you, the next year they don't love you, and oh, yeah. then you are oh, yeah. stuffed, you know. <laughs> they make the price. Definitely, yeah. 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 No, I think I think you have a good, sounds like you have a good plan, and you uh, you go to America for two months a year, and you sell your most of your wine there, so why not, you know. Enjoy, enjoy. Well, a lot of people do like that. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's the way the forward. Yeah, yeah. But I think but that is the key. Remember, what, that's what um, with my dad we figured out in the last uh, 15 years. The mm. key, for, I'm talking from a small one like mine, mm. the key is to sell directly to the private all your production. Definitely, yeah. That's yeah. the key. Well, okay. Because you have control, but also you can, um, you can train them in your wines, but also you can, uh, how can I say, give your your passion to the person that's selling, and then they adopt your your passion for your wine, and then they sell your wine with that with your passion. Correct. You know, because because you know you want a good representative for your wines, you know, because they they you want someone who has the same uh, understanding of your wine, so they can convey that to the consumer. Correct. Mm -hmm. Correct. You know. And that's why I start to all the, my, my wine dinner. I don't know if you saw in the website. I yeah, I had, that, I had a look while you were talking. I was trying to catch up to where <laughs> what was going on. But yeah. So with a, a chef, a friend of mine, we toured the States for three months and he cooked four courses in combination with my wine. Private. Eh? We talk about private villa. And we start like a joke. Now we don't know how to handle it. We do 40 dinners in less than three months. Wow. But we have fun, we have fun. We start to do a lot of celebrities now, so it's fun. But also, fun. What, what better way to sell your wine? Because, and, and also <laughs> to introduce your wine, you know, people to your wine, because, yeah, the wines are made for food and, and made for pleasure. So um, okay. it's the best way, yeah. And probably the Tuscan wine are uh, the most... You need the you need the food for to have for to taste our wine. Well, it's also the best way to humanize your brand, no? That you go there yourself and yeah. you yeah. cook and you show them your wine, your wine, how it's best. To but as in super Tuscan, you need some, you know, meat or cheese. You can open a bottle of super Tuscan and have a glass of wine. You know, that's <laughs> you know. <so. laughs> no, it's a bit heavy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so I think uh, we we should finish here, so we don't take up too much of your time. And, uh, oh, well, it was a pleasure. Very, <laughs> well, it was a pleasure to have you here. It was a very interesting discussion. I hope everybody who was here had fun. And uh, thank you to Nazim, also to to Greg, and of course thank you again to Giuseppe, and to all the others, Larissa, who are here. Uh, ah, because Nazim had a question about the Amarone. 
I think De he loves Amarone. Yeah, the Amarone, the Amarone it's, uh, you know, from the north, the Veneto region. <laughs> I love Amarone too, it's one of my favorite wines. Mm. Amarone is uh, a kind of late harvest. Uh, mm. it's, they, you know, they cut the grape, the bunch of the grape, and they live on the vines for a week. Oh, a passiro. A passiro, brava. And then, you know, but it's a great wine. I love Amarone. Mm. For me, Amarone, you know, I born with the taste of the San Francisco, of course, but <laughs> the Amarone, for well, me, it's much, uh, Amur Rondinella Corellino is also a good sometimes. <laughs> for example, besides my, you know, San Giovese, like that, uh, I love the Amarone much better than the Barolo, for example. You know, but... Well, Barolo is a bit more difficult to... I mean, great, I like um, it, but it's... It's a great it's a very good one. It's a little bit more difficult to understand for yeah, most of the it people. It takes a bit more time. Amarone is a bit... It's funny how I... you can see in the United States uh, a bottle of Amarone, let's say an average, not the top. You need three, four hundred dollars There is no way. Uh, and this is guy, Giuseppe Quintarelli. You never heard about Giuseppe yes, Quintarelli? Yes. Yes, Amazing. I need, to, I need to meet this guy shaking his hand because there's nothing less in the States than $500. Wow. <laughs> you know. <laughs> well, he's also kind of you know, kind so, of known for being one of the main uh, Marona producers. So yes, guess. yes. But in the States, everything, you know, it's five times more, you know, all the time. Yes. Yeah. Especially if it's imported, yeah? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Especially if it's important, yeah. I also love everything in Italian, so I think they kind of value it higher than mm -hmm. than perhaps they do here. So it, there is now they you have to see they call the roads the street now Tuscany Street, the Florence Street. <laughs> if you write Tuscany in some no, place, I... you make you make money. You know that's yeah. a yeah. that's a way to make money because it's so trendy. So that uh, I go sometimes in some uh, restaurants, you know, and uh, I open the menu and there is salad. You know, I live very close to Gaiola in Chianti. There was salad, you know, salad Toscana from Gaiola in Chianti. I grew up here, I never saw this salad with strawberries and like that. And I think the name, you know, and this is crazy. I laugh sometimes like crazy. You know. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's true. That's a way to convince the, the tourists that they're eating something genuine, even if it's not good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Okay, so thank you very much, Giuseppe, and this was very thank fun. You. So, yeah. Yeah. It's thank you. Thank you for having participated. Thank you. And, uh, the, the, the replay will be here later on, so I'll send it to you. Uh, have okay. a nice time during the summer, and uh, soon I will come and visit your winery. I don't know when. Absolutely. Yeah, you are welcome. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, thank you, everybody, again, Nazim, Greg, and Larissa, and the others. And uh, bye bye. I'll just bye -bye. end it here. Bye bye. Have a good night. Ciao, ciao. Thank you. Bye bye.